What's up everybody? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. I am Jess. Thanks for clicking on today's video. It is a week 251 update since this all began. <laughs> it is also, um, I'm in the week 8 of the 75 soft challenge or specifically day 60 of day 75. So I've got that update. I have the last week getting back on track with rescue meals and the message for the week that I'm working on with my own personal weight loss journey. But before I jump into that real quick, I do wanna say I am not a medical doctor. I am not a healthcare professional. I'm not an expert. All I'm sharing is my journey, my struggle with obesity and what I'm doing to overcome that obstacle to reverse or I should say rewind my health from morbidly obese to a healthy weight, living low carb, high protein, keto, you know, that true lifestyle change. So without saying any more, let's jump into today's video. Okay, so it is another week. <laughs> um, so last week's message was, you know, we were coming off of Thanksgiving, you know, all the extras, stuff like that that's normal. Um, those are obstacles. A lot of us had to challenge, you know, a lot of us traveled. So my message last week was if you were to find yourself off track or if you chose to go off track, uh, you know, intentionally, what's the best way I approach getting back on track? So I focus on rescue meals and jumping right back into the routine. So rescue meals are those tried and true, thoughtless, almost recipe-less meals that just make it easy to get back on track. So like burgers with, you know, broccoli. That's one of my go-to meals that I reach for. Like my chicken crust pizza where the crust is made with canned chicken and then you make it all the rest the way you would do a normal pizza. You know, like my turkey goulash that's like a weekly staple that I do. You know, taco bowls, like so easy. Things that you don't even have to think about. You don't need this huge long recipe. Just, you know, bacon and eggs. You don't need a recipe to do bacon and eggs. These are those things that you push that week to get back on track. Or even the first like week or two, just to get that momentum building again. So that was all last week, was just getting it back on track. So the interesting thing is, um, in years past when that whole week was about eating all of the things, all of the carbs, just letting loose, I gained so much more weight and had so much more of a hurdle to come back <laughs> to get back on track with, with. This time around, I controlled myself because I had set up a healthy routine going, leading all up into my week trip to Florida, right? So I, for the past, what, since October 5th, I have been reading every single day, at least an hour a day, you know, getting lost in a book, turning the TV off, you know, like that kind of thing losing myself in a book and a good story, you know, something that makes me happy, you know, getting my workouts in every day, you know, drinking my water, you know, like just getting that all in, eating my best, you know, or how I see makes me happy, you know, like the, you know, a low carb, high protein keto approach, you know, like, and, you know, minimizing alcohol, like just socially time, social occasions only, you know, like not every day. So after already setting that routine in motion, it was so easy to just jump right back into that because it was the new routine. It was the first time that I was like, okay, so I am in this challenge now. The newness has worn off of this routine. Now it's starting to feel like me. This is what I do. So it was real easy to snap out of you know vacation mode. I mean, I did stay active on vacation. I did stay a lot more in control. That does go pretty far in the grand scheme of things. You know, I didn't let loose. I didn't sit around all day. You're like, you're like I, I controlled it in a healthier way. I had the balance. I allowed myself the cheat meals. I allowed myself, you know, some social drinking on Thanksgiving, you know, like it, and without guilt. And then I knew, all right, game, that's over. And we go back to, you know, the healthier version of me that I want to be. So that whole thing came together real easy so that any pounds that I gained last week on, or it's two weeks ago now on vacation uh, over the Thanksgiving break when we w traveled to Florida, eight or nine days or whatever it was, 
I reversed any pounds I gained. So I did step on the scale because I was curious and I had gained three pounds, which I thought was excellent. I was thrilled to only be up three pounds and I kind of knew it was gonna be low. You know, I know the type of damage I can do in a week. So to be up only three and then to lose them by the end of the week, which is just, I travel in a car 17 hours twice, <laughs> you know, there and back. You know, like just a couple extras I had at Thanksgiving. Yeah, that would be a couple a couple pounds. A normal person would, you know, when you travel like that. So to be able just to get that off and to just sink back into the routine was thrilled. So as of today, the weigh-in, I'm still 239, and I'm still holding it at 16 pounds lost on this challenge. So with all that being said, I wanted to talk about the, the message for this week and as i'm reflecting on what i was going to say today what seems what what's different this time around is i was seeking happiness because the driver of my weight loss journey revolves around happiness if i'm not happy my emotions are out of control and it's giving me that urge to overeat to be unable to cons control myself unable to snap out of it you know and i didn't want that anymore i want to be happy so that things are settled down and I'm balanced inside. So it just was this thing where I, I literally have felt this way this whole, you know, 75 soft, but I didn't put it into words yet, how it was, like I was chewing on it this whole time. Like, why does this feel different? And I finally figured it out today. And it's because my goal this time was, I just wanna be happy. I will definitely change my appearance when I lose the weight. I will definitely change my habits when I'm, you know, doing this consistently, it's the new healthier me. You know, I'm making those lifestyle changes. I'm not just doing it for, to be a certain size or, you know, like I'm doing it for the right reasons this time, which in, in you know, at the end of the day makes me happy. You know, like it, it, it all fit together, you know, and I found ways to eat that was more how I wanted to eat instead of being so strictly keto and feeling restricted, although I love the way I felt, I love keto, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying in a long-term aspect, I don't want keto to be my, like being in ketosis to be my goal. I like eating similar to that, but I don't have to actually be in ketosis to be happy. Low carb, high protein seems to be like my sweet spot where I find happiness, I don't feel as restricted, I feel satisfied, you know, it gives me that little bit more leeway and it also doesn't pigeonhole me into one thing. You know, like that's a wider approach, I guess, to a lifestyle than keto, you know? So like I just loosened up in some areas that made me feel better and I didn't feel guilty. You know, and it comes to working out that endorphin rush every day makes me feel happy. I look forward to feeling happy because I go for my walk. I know I'm gonna listen to my music, I'm gonna move my body, I'm gonna come back feeling great because I burned off the crazy, you know? But it's part of my routine to make me happy. I didn't care enough before to make the effort to make myself happy by doing that. Instead, it was easier to just go open a package of chips and eat it, and then, oh, I feel great. You know, but then that came with the consequence of, now you're eating more calories and now you're starting to gain weight and the vicious, pro now you don't like the way you look and that whole cycle starts over again. So if I got down to the root of the problem, which I need to find my own individual happiness that only I have the answers to, it would be a game changer. So this, this week's message is about finding your happiness. That also means there are still rules to live by in order to lose weight. You do have to move your body. I mean, how intense and what you do and what sport or what exercise or all of that doesn't matter. You can lose weight lifting weights on your couch, you know, like, but just movement in general, you know, getting up instead of laying down, you know, so it's like, but you have to find your happiness in the movement you seek. So for me, I love weight training. I love strength training. That's what I do. You know, I feel so good that way. I like going for a walk. Those, that's what I do. I love playing softball with my kids. I love playing basketball with my kids. I love playing volleyball with my kids. You know, like if I loathe running, why would I go running and try to make that my routine or the new healthier me? I don't wanna run, you know, so don't do it. So you can stay with something longer and make it yours if you want to do it. If you're doing things for the wrong reasons, you're not gonna stick with it and it's just gonna be another fail on your record, you know, and then at that, at some point you have to take that into account, you know, like 
I don't want to fail anymore. I want to lose this weight and I keep it off and I want to change my life. The only way to do that is to do something you've never done before to get a result you've never had before. And that means finding what makes you happy. So by moving your body in the way that you want to, you know, eating the way you want to, you know, keto is not for everybody. Keto is amazing. I love, I freaking love keto and what it did for my life. You know, but it's not for everybody. So pick something that you can stick with. You know, they, you don't have to do one thing or another. It all comes down to what you want to do and what you can stick to. And I humbled myself by finding, okay, well, I will eat keto. I'll have keto days and, you know, in this lifestyle. But low carb, high protein is more where I'm settling, you know? And that's okay because that's what I want to do and that's what I can stick to. Because the yo yoing and that, that roller coaster, that is a hard ride to be on all the time, emotionally. So, by sticking to something that you want to do, you're not riding that roller coaster. You're just cruising along, you know? And when it comes to drinking your water, like the hydration levels, that helps in more ways than others. It's the crutch for the hunger. It's the crutch in between meals. It gives you something to do. It keeps you hydrated so that you don't get wrinkles, you know? <laughs> like, it's like, it makes you feel good to drink water. Our bodies require it. Our bodies do not require soda. Our bodies require water. It's free, you know? So it's like a lot of all this stuff just kind of clicked and made sense finally. And I could put words in it t today, you know? But, you know, 60 days ago, I didn't have that in my head at all. Like, it was not something I had arrived at in a decision. I was still feeling lost. You know, like, I wanted to change my life. I wanted to look better. I wanted to be healthier. I wanted to do all the things. I just didn't know how deep I had to go. And But what it meant to me was instead of doing something that everybody else wants or works for them, I had to find what made me happy that I could stick to and that I saw myself doing. Because granted, you can't just eat anything you want and not move your body. And there's a few people that might be able to in this world, but the majority of us cannot eat an, an excessive amount of food and not move our body and expect weight loss. You know, like we've all got to do something. So pick something that you actually want to do <laughs> and can stick with. And that has been, oh my gosh, it has been such a game changer. And to truly find happiness again, like I look forward to reading now. I look forward to so much stuff and it's changed my mood, which impacts my eating, which impacts my desire to stay positive, which impacts my, my determination to be able to get over any obstacle, which keeps my, you know, lifestyle something that this is what I'm building and what I want to do. And it starts that foundation and framework on that. So it might not seem like it makes sense to you, but eventually if you stick with something long enough, you're going to definitely see what I'm saying here. And it'll make sense because for the first time in a long time, things just make sense now. I get it. I'm so much more familiar with my journey, myself, my needs, you know, how I operate, how I tick, you know, and it's so rewarding to know me. I feel like for the longest time in my world, I didn't know me. And I feel like I'm knowing what Jess wants and what Jess needs and what Jess will do, you know, or is willing to do. And that's where you start finding that strength. So being consistent and doing something day after day will eventually feel like a routine. And then it will eventually feel like not so weird and foreign, but actually you're new, the new you. So <laughs> at the end of the day, I have this sense of confidence in myself again, where I know I'm going to do this. You know, I have that, I have love for myself I haven't had in a long time because I've just been so miserable. Um, I've had, let's see, I accepted the situation at hand. You know, I, I, it is what it is. It was, it's part of my story, you know, and things are just, they're moving forward, you know. <laughs> I will say, though, I, I wanted the weight off so bad the first time around when I lost 139 pounds. I wanted it off so bad that nothing really mattered. I, at all costs, if I would do it to get the weight off, you know, and that meant severely restricting myself, so much fasting, which fasting is not bad, restriction isn't bad, but extreme and all, you know, like I was doing it a much more unhealthy level or an unbalanced level. So, but it was like, I had to get that weight off at all costs. I get it, I understand now where I was, where I was mentally, but, 
it was it was just I didn't accept what I had done to myself, you know, by gaining all that weight to get to what 309 pounds. I I wanted it off so fast that nothing else mattered. You know, like I just didn't want to be 309 pounds anymore. But now this time around, in my second go or whatnot, yes, I want to get the weight off. But it's not all about that bottom line. You know, like because if you you can lose weight a thousand times, you gain and lose weight. It will never stay off until you get to the root or the source of the problem. So instead of focusing so much on the weight and losing all this weight and have by this date and you know this way and like all this pressure that I put on myself, I forgot to be happy along the way or seek my happiness. Instead, it was all that external noise. This time around, the focus is being happy from the inside out so that I don't have to torture myself to get back to the goal weight of, you know, 175 to 180, which is my goal weight. Um, I, I don't want to torture myself to get there. I want to be happy. And when I get there, I get there. And the amount of time it takes is the time it takes. But keeping in mind, the most important part is being happy on my trail down there, you know, so that this is something that is, it sticks. It is what it is. It's not something that's just going to keep riding that roller coaster of emotions and weight and you know, you know, you lose the same pounds. I, I, that's one thing. How many times in my in my journey have I lost the same pounds? You know, like I've gained five pounds to lose five pounds to gain five pounds to lose those five, and you're just sitting there, sitting there and spinning. You know, I didn't want that anymore. I don't want that for me. I want happiness, and happiness stems way deeper than all the exterior no exterior noise that I was focusing on last time. If you can fix your happiness, you can fix your you and you can really make change. So uh, that's the message for this week. I hope it makes sense. And, but the thing is, when I set my goal weight first time around, I wanted to get down to 175. For me, I'm tall. That's that's a good weight for me. You know, I do strength training. I'm, I lean higher on the scale there. Um, but 175 was like set in stone. That was the number I had to get to. You're like, oh my lord. You know, this time around, I've got a range. You know, like 170 to 180 is my range. If I like 180, we'll stop there. If I want to cut, you know, have a couple pounds to play with, maybe we'll chip some more off. Maybe 175 is where I'll stay, you know, or make my goal. Maybe I want to stop at 185. Like, we're going to get, we'll see when we get there. It's not set in stone. It's all about how I feel. And that is another thing where I'm like, that would have never been allowed the first time around with my, my goals. It was like, no, it's 175, maybe we'll go to 160. You're like, I was determined to hit a specific number. And that number was supposed to make me happy. No, I'm gonna feel what makes me happy. And if I like this, this is where we stop and that will be my goal. You know, so very different approaches. I'm seeking happiness this time and that is something that is exciting because I've never, I've never sought out something for me before, you know, and it feels good to like pay attention to me instead of focus everywhere else. So all of that stuff makes my journey and my weight loss and my emotions so much easier to balance. You know, and that is crazy. So if I'm if I'm happy and feeling balanced, I don't feel I need to restrict. I don't need. To, I don't feel like I need to make up for all the restriction and overeat. Is all about that balance in the journey, and that is a. That's why I know this time around, I have confidence. I'm gonna do it this time. I will get there and I'll stay there instead of gaining 70 pounds back before I've like figured it out. You know, and then have to relose that 70 pounds. So, at the end of the day. That's basically all we're talking about here. And <laughs> you got to find your happiness and what matters to you. Not what Sally says, not what George says, not what social media says, not what, it's what you say. Find your voice and find your happiness and let's get it going. So that's what I'm doing. That's the plan for the week. So I've got, to, so my parents are in town. So I figured I'll do a cooking video at some point this week and I'll see you at the next one. I am Jess. You are watching Keto Rewind. Bye-bye.